We're using the same topology that we've used in the last couple lessons. We have a MDS 9216, which we'll be focusing on primarily, and a fiber channel link that runs to a Nexus 5548. Today we'll be concentrating mainly on the 9216. In previous lessons, we created vSANs, and in this lesson, we're going to verify our vSANs. So we want to exploit different show commands to see which vSANs we have in our configuration, and we also want to see which ports are members of which vSANs. So let's go ahead and take a look at the switch. Here we can see that I'm connected to my MDS9216. Just like before, I'm connected over an IP connection to the Management Zero interface. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to take a look at my vSAN membership. So if I run the command show vSAN membership, I can see that I have several vSANs created and that majority of my interfaces belong to vSAN 1, which is a default vSAN, and which is what happens right out of the box. And then I have other vSANs created, which is vSAN 100 and vSAN 200. Those are the vSANs that I'm primarily concerned with, and they include interfaces fiber channel 1 slash 1 and fiber channel interfaces 1 slash 2. The second command that I want to run as well is that I could just run a show running config and I would get the entire running config but as you may know from past lessons the Nexus operating system contains a few shortcuts so if I want to see just the running config that pertains to my vSANs I would just do show running config vSAN. Now I can see that it's showing me just the parts that pertain to my vSANs and for instance I can see that vSAN database contains vSAN 100 and vSAN 200 each with their respective names. As well, if I scroll down to the bottom, I can see that my vSANs each contain, uh, vSAN 100 and 200 contain uh, fiber channel interface 1 slash 1 and 1 slash 2 respectively. So this is how I can get to some really good information on my vSANs and how they're configured. And because zoning is associated with individual vSANs, I can actually see that information as well, so how the security is applied to those individual vSANs in the environment. Also, as I scroll down to the bottom, it's going to show me any interface configuration for the ports that exist in the different vSANs. And as I can see, there's just not a lot there right now. Another command I might want to run is my show startup config vSAN. So once again, there's a difference between my running config and my startup config. My running config is what's currently on the box, which may contain unsaved changes, and my startup config, which is what the box is going to boot up with next time that I reboot the device or there's a power outage. So if I want to see what that vSAN configuration looks like in my startup config, I would do the same thing. But it would say show startup config vSAN instead of show running config vSAN. We go ahead and press enter scroll down and take a look to see if there's any differences there. There's also another command called show vSAN usage that lets me know which vSANs are configured. I can see that I have five on this device and which vSANs are available for configuration. So that's a very easy way to check what's available and what's not in your configuration. I can also show information for individual vSANs like vSAN 100, and I will see the details in regards to vSAN 100 specifically, such as the name and the state and whether it's operational or not. I could also use these commands in a range. So for instance, I could say show vSAN 100 through 110. So I would see the information for those particular vSANs that I put in that range. It's also important to remember that, once again, these vSAN configurations are locally significant to the individual switches. So these are things that you'll have to do to multiple switches in your environment if you have vSAN 100 located on multiple switches in your environment. Please join me for the next lesson, Configuring Switchboards.